thanks for stopping by and if you're new to my channel welcome I'm Robbie Greer from Rusticated Art and this is Fun Times Family Art where you get to draw along with me from the comfort of your own home. <laughs> now if you're a homeschooler and feel you can get some value from my content then please feel free to use it. The only thing I ask is that you subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Now today's tutorial is a little bit more advanced but if you've been following along in my Fun Times Family Art series it's just another step in your artistic journey. Now it gets a bit tricky at times but that's mainly just me. <laughs> so if you stick with it you'll get there in the end. Now be sure to watch through to the end because not only will I be giving you all the tips and techniques that I've learned along the way but I'm also going to be giving a shout out to another very special channel and there'll also be a little bonus as well. So what do you reckon? Enough talk, more action? Well come on then. <laughs> the first thing I'll do is I've done the grid, I've marked out the squares so you don't get lost and the next thing we do is we just go in and we do the outline. So I'm going to start in square one. Now this is where the beak is so it sort of comes here like that and it goes up and we're looking at about there so I like to mark where I'm going to take the line to. And these are just lines, they're not set in concrete by any means because what you'll find is there's, there's, there's going to be changes to be made. That's just part of drawing, you know, all we're doing at the moment is just sort of setting everything up. His head comes over here, about a third of the way, about the same there, so that sort of goes. And then we've got here, we're roughly about a halfway, halfway mark, and that's going to go across here. Well, it might be a little bit higher actually. We always got to be rubbing out. This is what I like to call the ugly stage where we're just putting things in place, just doing the outline. So there be, as I said, there'll be a lot of rubbing out to do. I come up here like that. Pretty much down like that. And then come to about here. And that's going to come down pretty much through the air, through this the center there of the the cross, or the cross, I mean, and then down here it's going to come through just, just sort of over the halfway mark, about there. Come down here, and then we're going to come about to here. There's a feather sort of sticking out there, so that's going to go down there, here, and down here, and then that's going to come eventually going to end up about there, but on the way, sort of through here like that, and then down. Right now, come here on this side, sort of more. Right, just about here. Go down like that, here. Say so she's a young female. In the in the monitor I'm looking at, the picture I'm looking at on the monitor, she's she's not dark dark black, which is an indication that she's she's a immature female. Now off camera what I've done is I've divided that, this grid here, the square here, into halves so we've got quarters. But I also put the diagonal in as well. So if we looked at this on our picture, 5-3, and we would have, I just want to show you so you can get more precise with your drawings. It just helps you to just get things, I mean we're trying to do a fairly realistic type drawing. That's the whole idea behind these grid grids otherwise I wouldn't bother to be honest you know but I want to try and get as realistic as we can and I want to show you how I go about doing it so I'm going to just, I'll just show you on this one anyway just very lightly because these marks are obviously going to come out and then we go up here so what we've done is we've divided the actual square into four squares one two three four and we've got the diagonals as well so on the picture our reference photo I've got the same so we just worked on this area here, what we'd find is that that's the stomach or the, that coming down here is actually a bit too low. And it's little things like this that actually can change the drawing and you can't work out, you go, now why is that like that? It just, so that's why I like to use this. So if we just do this, we're going to find that it's going to sort of come along that line and then about there it comes across, it comes down then it's going to come out there and then to there. I'm going to use a lighter pencil for this. Even, I'm just hoping you can follow along alright. Now, 
on this side in this square so we're about halfway just under halfway I'd say and that's it comes down to that line there that diagonal line just outside of that and it's going to go up like that now the leg starts off right there and that's going to go it's just short of halfway so it comes comes down to about there and then about here so we just keep that distance about the same it should all marry up now I'm just going to leave that for now I just want to do this one leg to start with so the next grid I'm not too worried about this one here but this one here 6 2 we'll just put that in now that's just to give us an idea of where we're going to be it's a bit like painting with numbers <laughs> so once again I'm going to do offline I'm just going to put in the angles it's only this little area here that we need to be concerned about so I'll be back in a sec okay now so what I've done off camera I've put the extra lines in this to break this down into four squares plus we've got the diagonals as well so that's the same what we've got on here so what I'm going to do now we can see this here is going to come through the leg it does sort of curve down a bit so it comes out and then out here it's going to curve down to come into about there and then the same I'm just following that one along now through here there's a rope so that's where it's sitting on wire right but in here where it contacts there down to there and then we just got a little claw the talon is going through there and down here it's very hard to really see what is going on because it's uh, it's a it's a, a talon or a claw but it's really hard to make out so we've got that going through there and then we've got okay, there's a bit higher up and they're quite big there their talons and claws and that and this one comes like that there. Now here, it's going to come through here like that, and then it goes through and up there. Now, and the, as I say, the rope's going through there. It's very hard when you can't sort of see exactly what it is you're trying to put in. Very hard. But anyway, we'll get there. I might pay to put the, the rope in now. So what I might do with the rope is just draw a line through there. So roughly, we'll just do a, a very light line just to sort of get where I think it should go. That line's a bit dark, but should be just really using should be using a lighter pencil. But anyway, now put the other foot in. So that is in three five to start with, and that comes down down there. That's about all we can see of that in that square, and then it's going to come down. Can't be, surely it can't be the, the, the talent, that's huge. And then that one there comes, it comes down that side, through there. And we've got another one, goes over there, because the back leg, or there, <laughs> I've got the back leg. Oh, hang on, what we'll do, before we go any further, we've got that there, alright, and that comes down there. It's over halfway, so it's about there. Alright, and that carries on up wing and then this comes down here we'll just get the, get the line drawing done so that comes down here through there through the the angle out there I'm, not, <laughs> I'm really not all that happy with that but that's how it is We'll take out some of these lines so we can see what's happening. This here is all in shadow. But it might make us, well, it will. It'll make a bit more sense once we get the shading in. Which we're just about up to now. Just about done all the outline. So all the lines can be a bit confusing. Well, I, well, I tidied it up a little bit. So it's looking a bit rough there. And I just really felt it needed a little bit of something. <laughs> <laughs> that's all shadow, so that's just going to be shaded in completely. And under here is the same. And that shadow sort of comes across right to there. So this is all going to be dark, and then hopefully it'll make a little bit of sense. Now, over here, now that even though the talon comes, the claw it comes over here like that, then the claw comes down here. They're very territorial, these uh, magpies. Well, I didn't realise. I'm just going to bring that in a bit smaller. 
I didn't realise, you know, when we first moved here, there was about 20, might be more, 20 or 30 magpies. And you see them all out on the on the power lines, all sitting, you know, and they must be all tribal because they all sort of hung around together in different uh, in different sort of groups. And and what would happen was would be they were actually very friendly and you could actually feed them. They'd come up and eat out of your hand and jump up on you. I do have some photos of that. And then I learnt that you're not supposed to feed them or anything because this is what happens. And they get all sorts of deformities because they, they got to eat so much protein and, and they can't, we'll just leave that bit for now, and they can't just feed them you know, bits of mints and stuff because that's not part of their diet. And it's creating all sorts of problems. And I did not realise that. So anyway, the other problem too, of course, was that when they, the young ones get old enough, they seem to get rid of them, they want them to leave because you'll see time and time again, the mother or the father picking on the little one, on the young one, and you can always tell it's a young one, and, and eventually they drive them out. I guess it's, you know, for breeding purposes and what have you. So I stopped feeding them when I found out that, you, you know, you're not supposed to do that because it does create abnormalities, deformities, but man, did they used to fight like they'd be. I can remember one, one, one of them come up and sat on me fence, and next minute the other one comes swooping in, and I mean swooping in, but virtually bolded off the, the fence, and then another one came in, and the other one held it down by its claws, like, it was laid back, and they had, the claws were locked together, and they were laid back, and then this other one came in, and started hitting, attacking, and going for its eye, I was like, oh, I ain't have that, so I yelled out and chased them away. Yeah, very, very territorial, and they, yeah. The bird life around here is amazing. And what happens is you'll see the minor birds, they seem to have, they seem to be mates with the magpies, because now and again you'll see a big kestrel or crows coming in, and all, the next minute you see the minor birds, out they go, woof, and they don't hit it or anything, but they, they chase them away. The magpies just sit there. It's an amazing sort of an arrangement they have. Well, it's sort of like the outline done there, we'll just come up here and I asked my neighbour down the road because he seemed to always be, they'd always be at his place and he'd be feeding them, but you can feed them, but you've got to feed them the right sort of thing, you can't just give them, in fact you shouldn't feed them at all, but if you feed them mealworms and, and uh, what's the other thing, crickets and stuff that they normally would eat anyway, then that's all right, so that's what he used to do, and I asked him one day, I said, why, where's all the magpies going? They're all, he wasn't too sure, he said, well, now it's the rainy season, and there's plenty of tucker around, so, you know, they'd rather eat worms and insects and things like that, that's, that's their diet, really, and that sort of made sense, you know, and they've never sort of come back in the same numbers, but you still get them, I've still got, you know, like, Bluey, he, he's always there, and he comes out, just, just wanders around our garden, you know, grabbing the insects and that. Oh, and the, 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 they sing so beautifully. I don't remember them singing like that when I lived in New Zealand. Just putting that in there so that that's a bit lighter there. And, and, and up here we've got right on here. Comes down and there's a... You know, in New Zealand, there was nothing like here. Here they just... I couldn't believe it when I first moved in. And they, <laughs> they laughed the food though. That was what it was. That's why they were so friendly, not because of anything else can't feed them so it just, just doesn't help them out at all. They're not hungry. When you start feeding them then they get dependent on it right? and we don't want that. And then of course, oh about a month ago, it was nesting season. And the way I used to go for my walk, I remember there was a magpie there and, and he, a couple of times he sort of just gave me a little swoop, not, nothing too bad, just a little flyby. I thought, oh yeah. And then when nesting season started, I, I didn't realise at the time, but I walked the same route, and next minute this, he came flying past, and you could hear his, hear his beak snapping, snap, snap, snap. And he was so close to me, about that far away, like right by my ear, he came there, and I turned around, because they go straight back up to the tree, and I turned around, and you know, told him off, yeah, and do that to me, and, and, and then as I turned around and kept walking, he came back again, and whoosh, and like, he, he definitely, well, he was just protecting his, and I wasn't sort of, that wasn't sort of in my territory either, like, I've noticed on the street when they, all the other ones were there, I'd seen strangers walking past, and they'd, they'd do it, they'd swoop, they never swooped me, 
In fact, I've never been swept by the magpies, not until that day. And man, he was savage. He was really letting me know in no uncertain terms. Mate, you're in, this is where my nests are, this is where my babies are going to be, and I don't want you around here, so I got the message and I stopped going that way, so I found another way to walk. That's right, it's there, it's there. Well, not just theirs, is it? It's ours as well. Anyway, I'd rather, rather not upset the apple cart and just let them have whatever's theirs and I'll find somewhere else to go for a walk. Well, that's the outline done. I might just leave it there for today, it's quite a bit of time. Next time we come back, we'll start to shade it in. Now if you're following along, just take your time. See how I've sort of rubbed things out? I made some mistakes and you know, but that's uh, that's just how it is. That's how we learn. You know, it's a bit messy down here, but I'll get that sorted out. Well thanks for watching through to the end. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Now it's not an absolute beginner's drawing, but if you've been following it along, like I said before, in my Fun Times family playlist. Uh, it's just another step in your artistic journey. Now, today's shout out goes to Brit Girls Go Stateside. So when you get the chance, jump on over there, give them a bit of love. As a small YouTuber, we all need all the help we can get. Lucy and Julie. They are a mother and daughter team that actually come from the UK, well they live, they're from the UK should I say, and they're now living in the United States of America. So what they're doing is they're sort of comparing the two, you know, the two different cultures, and it's really, really interesting. I really enjoy it. Things that they've picked up since they've moved to the States, they do a Share the Love Sunday, yeah. And, and that's awesome. They, you know, they talk to different YouTubers, small YouTubers, and they have a little, they have a real good discussion. They're a couple of really fun ladies. It's just something totally different. I know I enjoy it. So when you get the chance to jump over there, tell them Robbie sent you from Rusticated Art, I know you're really going to enjoy it, and they're going to appreciate it too. Well, thanks for watching through to the end. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. And it wasn't an overly complicated drawing, but there's a few tricky little bits in there. <laughs> now, today's motivational quote comes from a guy that we have all know, we've all heard of. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. You know who said that? Steve Jobs. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Now, if you like what you're seeing, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with your friends, because if you're enjoying it, they're going to enjoy it as well. And if you haven't yet subscribed, well, it's free. It's free to subscribe as well. And if you really like my content and want to give me some support, you can always buy me a coffee. And I've left the link in the description below. So thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you in the next one. Same place, same time.